Well, after a two-week COVID hiatus, welcome back to our study of Christian doctrine. Tonight we'll continue looking at the attributes of God by focusing on the long-suffering or the patience of God. Throughout the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, the long-suffering of God is often mentioned in conjunction with the attributes of God's mercy and grace, such as we read in Exodus 34, verse 6, The Lord passed before him, that is, Moses, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Or in Psalm 103, verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Many understand the manifestation of God's mercy, grace, and patience as being the expression of God's goodness. For example, God's mercy is the display of His goodness to those who are suffering and in despair. God's grace is the display of His goodness to those who deserve only punishment or justice. God's patience, or long-suffering, is the display of God's goodness to those who who continue to sin against God by withholding punishment from them, at least for the time being, giving them a chance to repent. So while the attribute of God's goodness certainly includes the manifestation of His mercy, grace, and patience, as you can see, there are differences between them, and these differences merit, uh, I believe, that we take a closer look at them individually. But Today's study, I want to focus on the patience of God, or His long-suffering. The patience of God is what is called a communicable attribute, which, if you'll remember from a previous study, means that those attributes of God that human beings, to a degree, possess, such as patience, or love, or mercy, or hate, to name a few. We have all asked God to give us patience which, of course, God does by testing our current level of patience, and through testing, He strengthens or increases our ability to be patient. When we ask God for patience, it's with the understanding that God Himself is patient with us, which, of course, God is very patient. By asking God for patience, we are seeking to be more like God in the area, at least, of being patient with other people. But the difference between God's patience and human patience is that while we must continually learn patience, God is patience. God is long-suffering with His sinful and rebellious creation. God doesn't have to learn patience because being patient is a perfection of God's holy nature. God is patient just as God is love or God is mercy or God is grace or God is goodness. God is not less in one attribute and greater in another attribute, nor do the divine attributes compete with one another for supremacy. Love is not fighting for supremacy over wrath, nor is love greater than wrath or wrath greater than love. God is all of his attributes and the fullness of each of them as they are displayed in the simplicity and perfection of his holy nature. Remember, the Bible teaches that God's nature is simple rather than compound, which means that God is not a compound or a, com uh, a combination of His attributes, that is to say, made up of His attributes. Rather, God is simple in that God is His attributes. So what does the Bible mean when it says that God is long-suffering or patient? English Puritan Stephen Carnock writes in his classic text on the attributes of God, that God's slowness to anger is a branch or a slip from His mercy. Meaning that the reason that God is slow to anger, or the reason that God is patient, is because God is full of mercy. We read in Psalm 145, verse 8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. According to Charnock, the long-suffering of God differs from the mercy of God in that mercy respects the creatures as miserable. Patience respects the creature as criminal. Mercy pities him in his misery, and patience bears with the sin which engendered that misery. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, 
But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. So in other words, God is patient towards sinners because in his mercy, God is seeking their repentance and salvation, as we read in Romans 2.4. Or do you not presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? So we ask the question, and we probably have asked this ourselves at times, why doesn't God judge the world now? And the answer is that God is giving this world time to repent. Why doesn't God long and why does God, I should say, why does God long endure with those who are so set against him and hate him? Because God is giving them time to repent. God is patient with sinners because he is merciful toward sinners. If God was not merciful toward sinners, then God would not need to be patient with sinners. And so the patience of God proves that God is merciful to this sinful world. Therefore, we must respond to this in repentance and come to Christ for forgiveness, reconciliation, and eternal life. For as Stephen Charnock so rightly remarks, this patience being a branch of mercy, the exercise of it is founded in the death of Christ. If there would have been no sin, then God would not have had to display his mercy towards sinners. No sin no need of divine mercy. And if there is no need of divine mercy, then there is no need for God to be patient with this world. But as it is, man did sin against God. In response to our rebellion against God, he demonstrates mercy towards us. A mercy that is founded upon the redeeming death of Christ for sinners. And because of God's merciful response to sinners by the atoning death of his Son, according to 2 Peter 3.10, God is patient towards you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So if you've ever wondered why God allows evil, or if you prefer for me to say it this way, why is God so long-suffering with evil people? The answer is so that his redemptive mercy in his son Jesus Christ might be on display in a world that so desperately needs mercy. Why does God allow evil? He is giving people an opportunity to repent. And we should all be thankful that God is mercifully patient with us. Now, having said all of that, does this mean that God's long-suffering patience, does it mean that it will last forever? And the answer is no. And the reason that the answer is no is because God's patience is temporary. His patience with sinners comes to an end, either at our death or if we happen to be alive at the second coming of Christ. So either by our own death or at the return of Christ, we will all stand before God in judgment. And those who do not have, those who have not, I should say, those who have not presumed, as Paul writes in Romans 2.4, those who have not presumed on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, realizing that God's kindness was meant to lead us to repentance, we actually repented and turned to Christ for forgiveness and salvation. We will enter the fullness of the kingdom of God, clothed in the righteousness of his Son, forgiven for our sins. But those who did presume on his riches and of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness was meant to lead them to repentance, they will perish in their sins without Christ, and will be cast into the fiery ju judgment of God's eternal justice, or hell, where they will receive justice from the Almighty for their sins. So let me read Romans 2, verses 4 and 5 together. Or do you not presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. God is good, and because God is good, God is merciful and patient toward us all. And the reason that God is merciful and patient with the sinful world is because that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. But if you spurn the grace of God, rejecting his loving mercy and abusing his divine patience, then you will face the justice of God in hell. And from hell there is no repentance unto life, only divine wrath. All right, uh, from this brief study, uh, we clearly see just how precious the long-suffering patience of God is toward each of us. Where would any of us be if God were not patient with us? We would be in hell. That's where we would be. But there is one more truth that we need to apply before we end our study tonight, and that is to see our need for us to be patient with our enemies just as God has been patient with us. We have done far worse to God by sinning against Him than any person could ever do by sinning against us or we against them. And if God is patient with us, forgiving us for our sins, then let us be patient and forgiving of one another. I close with these words from Ephesians 4 verse 31, 32, and then chapter 5, verse 1. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. All right, it's a pretty quick study tonight, but uh, there it is. We'll pick back up with some more of the attributes of God next week, good Lord willing. So until then, I'd like to pray, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you so much for our brief time together in your word tonight. Thank you for your patience toward us, and help us, Lord, to be patient with others. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and let us forgive those who have sinned against us, just as you have forgiven us completely in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. So until next Sunday night, God bless.